It's an honor, Mr. President. Madam President, it's an honor. Without the speech, none of us would have been here. None of us would have been there without you members, and none of us would have been here without the guest of honor. It is my singular honor this morning to invite the guest of honor to make a speech. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for you. she wants and win it. Uh, definitely the future is female and I truly believe that the future is female. <laughs> Let me also congratulate the board, incoming board members. I'm just hoping that since I don't know the makeup of that, I'm hoping for the 60-40 representation <laughs> within that board as well. Um, it starts with us. We have to make, if we're going to make noise about representation, it starts from every aspect of life that we do. And governance is a big, important aspect of everything that we do. So I'm hoping also that your board has good representation of women. But I also hope that you have a good representation of diversity as it comes in terms of us Malawians. Let me also recognize that I have a couple of good friends who we've been the institution, I look at Mr. Baganga and I think of the days where I used to argue with him when I used to sit on the IPC at Minister of Justice. And so we come a long way, I'm glad to see him still around. I think I heard about Mr. Zoma as well, used to argue with him a lot about central government issues. So it is nice to see. And if you talk about the uh, director of the BPDA, I used to argue and make a lot of noise with him when he was at mayor and I was the director of legal affairs. I'll tell him, you can't do that, it's not legal. So I'm glad to see everybody here. Let me apologize that the speech you find in the program is not the speech that I will make. A judgment only gets perfected after we read it, so bear with me that the speech is not the same. It has, kind, it has quite significantly changed, but I, I hope you will get a copy of my speech. I decided to title my speech, Tapping Malawi's Great Future, The Hope for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises. So let Honorable Mrs. Vera Kanduko, the Deputy Minister of Labor, I also saw your husband who I used to argue with during my Chilunga more days, so I'm glad to see him. Uh, the President of NIPS, the Board Chair and members of the Board, our going Board and members of the incoming Board, the Director of the PPDA, Mr. Elias House, the NIPS CEO, Mrs. Gladys Mali, distinguished speakers, esteemed delegates, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and also management and staff of San Benito who are making sure that, although we, we're feeling a lot of heat in here, but I'm making sure that we are well taken care of. Let me start by quoting that late Kofi Annan, who said that the world is not ours to keep. We hold it in trust for future generations. I should say that it is always a pleasure and honor that I'm invited to speak to such distinguished professionals. It is a further honor, especially as a Malawian, that I get to interact with you in a forum very far removed from my place of work, the courtroom, but in a professional setting and in my beautiful mom watching. For 2020, the fact that we have been able to gather is one of the most heartwarming sights. As the past 10 months, COVID-19 has altered the way we interact and live. Honestly, when I was approached a few months ago to speak at this important gathering, my thoughts were that it was going to be a virtual gathering, interaction, as it has been in a lot of the spaces that I've been speaking at lately. So this is an amazing moment to be physically present. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, every year as procurement and supply specialists, we gather to share knowledge and network. And it is crucial that we ensure that such gathering not only talks about things specific to us, but important to the nation. Malawi's development is a critical issue that every Malawian should be concerned about and working towards achieving. 
future generations will ask us what we did to ensure a bright future for them. The words of former president of Liberia, Ellis John Sansalif, that the future generations will judge us not by what we say, but what we do continues to ring true today more than ever. It is important to know that the stress and stress that these important issues have a huge bearing on the economy of our country. Furthermore, they define the well-being of our households and our loved ones. Every single person in this room cannot ignore nor choose not to participate in such critical discussions. Malawi, let me now do a little bit of tourism. Malawi is our little slice of heaven on earth as it is filled with amazing, such amazing beauty. Mount Goji is my home district, offers you the amazing lake of stars, incredible wildlife, beautiful nature, scrumptious food, don't forget to enjoy the jungle, but most of all amazing smiles and welcoming people and helpful people. Honestly, this applies across the country. As a Malawian, the amazing things that Malawi has to offer one is endless, but most of all fulfilling for a person wishing to see nature and wildlife, but more so to taste incredible food or even experience culture. Malawi has it all for our visitors, and when I mean our visitors, I mean even us as local visitors. However, like the true Malawian that I am, I shall never stop asking my fellow Malawians to take time to enjoy the wonders of their own country. Let us take a few hours or days to explore and do a little bit of local tourism after or even during the free times that we have during this conference. But also when we get home, let our people enjoy this country. It is our duty and responsibility to explore and contribute to the local economy. At this point, let me turn to what and why we have gathered today. It is very imperative that I congratulate you on an amazing theme for this year, unlocking the growth of micro, small, and medium enterprises in Malawi the legal and financial challenges and the microscope. Therefore, it was easy to find the theme for this opening address, which was tapping Malawi's great future, the hope for micro, small, and medium enterprises. The topic has become crucial, more so due to the COVID-19 pandemic that hit the world and did not spare Malawi. Worldwide, MSCs, MSMEs have been accepted as the engine of economic growth, and for promoting equitable development. They further make up over 90% of total enterprises in most of the economies and are credited with generating the highest rates of employment growth. Interestingly, due to their low investment requirements, operational flexibility, and the capacity to develop appropriate indigenous technologies, MSMEs have the power to propel any country to new heights. It is therefore necessary that we contextualize how important MSMEs are to Malawi's economy. It is said that overall, trust you, I don't, I have not looked at these figures. I'm hoping they are right. I'm not a biggest person. I deal with laws and acts. I deal with Section 24 regulations, such and such. I'm not sure about the figures. You people who do figures will, will judge whether they are right or not. It says overall, Malawi MSC SME sector is estimated to consist of 1,141,784 business owners. And this is said to have increased by 50% as there was 758,118 in 2012. Notably, the numbers show that there are slightly more male business owners at 583,694, representing 51% than the female business owners who are at 558 and 90 and 90, which is representing 49%, showing us a 3 percentage point increase in, in females from 2012. Further, about 11% of the population own MSMEs, and that's a very low number, 11%, means we are all, everyone in here is not doing anything to do with enterprise. Most of us are heavily relying on being employed in a job and employs approximately 1,825,219 people, which is up from 1,260,530 in 2012. But this shows growth in not only full-time employment, but overall growth of the sector in providing employment by 68% increase from 2012. 
The analysis shows that MSMEs in Malawi contribute a significant share of employment within the Malawi total labor force. That is 24%. Looking at livelihoods, about 21% of the Malawian outer population derives their livelihoods from the MSE SME sector. In terms of revenue, the figures in 2019 are that the sector generated a revenue of approximately 15.8 billion US dollars with a cumulative value of revenue of all as MSMEs after the deduction of expenses to deduce value addition translated to about 6.8 billion US dollars. And this can be roughly coined as contribution to the gross domestic product. Incidentally, with the contribution of homo MSMEs likely already in the overall GDP was said to be about 11%. That is 3.6 billion, which is 53% of the total MSME contribution. While the informal MSME contribution is about 3.2 billion US dollars, which is about 47%. Thereby indicating that the informal MSMEs have a significant contribution to the economy overall as if formalized and added to the national GDP, which is about 14%. And it is stated that in 2019, that it was about 8.1 billion according to the estimates of Ministry of Finance, which when added to the Malawian economy is said to be valued at about 11.5% in 2019. Now, as a developing country, Malawi cannot do without the MSMEs. No country can achieve a sustainable economic growth without expanding and diversifying trade with micro, small and medium enterprises. As acknowledged by the Ministry of Trade, a vibrant micro, small and medium enterprise sector can become a catalyst for accelerated economic development for Malawi. Although the significance of MSMEs is well documented, there are a lot of challenges which entrepreneurs face. Firstly, MSME businesses generally struggle to attack, attract capital to fund their endeavors. Secondly, they also have constraints to pay taxes and meet regulatory compliance obligations, especially in the beginning. And this I have first-hand information because I sit with a, I work with a small um, boutique management firm called Synergy, which does, which runs it to six five pitch. And you realize that capital is not given to a person that has not been um, regulated by Malawi Bureau standards. How do you get to Malawi Bureau standards level if you don't start the process and you don't get the money? to input into your business as it, as it stands. And thirdly, MSMEs are dealing with business advisors who lack capacity and understanding of the business side of the business because they're usually financiers in the strictest sense and not business owners or social capitalists. Fourthly, they lack spaces and, not, and resources to help navigate the various regulatory issues necessary for them to strive as a business. Fourthly, access to markets continues to be problematic due to low outreach and non-availability of new markets, as well as competition with big industries, to mention a few. Lastly, but equally important, MSC SMEs face difficulties to compete for business in government contracts due to capacity including economic limitations. Despite these challenges, what gives me confidence is that there are solutions available to address this, and most importantly, they are local and contextualized to Malawi. The solutions must and should give SMEs hopes. For instance, the change in policy and legislative permits that give MSMEs the opportunity to compete for government contracts is quite a welcome idea. Consequently, it is said that the Malawian policy and legislative framework is usually very much in tune with ensuring that every person has a right to economic activity, which Section 30 provides for. 20, sorry, Section 29 provides for, and the right to development, which Section 29 of the Constitution provides for. It is this broad constitutional provision that has given rise to enabling laws which should allow MSMEs to flourish in our country. It is my hope that as procurement and supply specialists, but more so as Malawians, that they become aware that the government of Malawi enacted the 6040 preferential treatment law through the Public Procurement and Disposal Act and as, as Assets Act to, to favor the MSMEs and to facilitate supporting their economic capacity. The law provides that 60% professional treatment of public procurement 
contracts will be given to some MSMEs, while 40% will be given to the large enterprises. Although the new law offers major hope for MSMEs, one cannot help to ask that since its enactment in 2017, what is the data showing in terms of its implementation? It is evident that currently there are fears of emerging financial and technical limitations that limits that might prevent MSMEs to have quality and timely order deliveries in executing the 6040-based contracts. Again, others think 6040 regulation is a waste of time and government resources, as most MSMEs shun away and do not want to be identified by government to avoid paying taxes and regulation fees. Further, despite the law being available to prioritize MSMEs, one needs to ask if corresponding laws are available to make financing available through loans and grants that are developmental in nature. <coughs> Malawi's answer is in the negative because the financial system still does not have a regulatory, regulatory approach that allows MSC, MSC actual opportunity to such financing. Government needs to ensure that the talk in the PDDA is enabled in its financing rules. There is need to change the paradigm of MSMEs heavily relying on informal funding, which at most times is not to grow the enterprise, but just to make it manage. <laughs> Additionally, we need to ensure that the MSMEs have access to financing that is not crippling. At this note, I will say most funding that MSAs have is almost extortional, as it is obtained from illegal means like loan sharks. In terms of financial challenges, the world economy, including Malawi, has seen a major shift due to COVID-19, and this has hit the MSMEs hard. In recent times, financing institutions have also tightened their collateral needs from MSMEs, and this is understandable due to the time. But that remains the most crucial aspect of growth for SMEs. And after attacking the regulatory framework, therefore, the need for a robust financing system for Malawi for SMEs is fundamental. To address the situation, such financing needs to be one that is inclusive of sectors, size, age, and gender. It is therefore imperative that, despite the challenges I've noted above, as well as the COVID-19 crisis, we find ourselves aware that there is plenty of opportunities for us to change our thinking or doing business. And Iropis Maxim says that in our every deliberation, we must consider the impact of our decisions on the next seven generations. The question is, what are you considering for the next seven generations? Therefore, it is my belief that today is a call to all of us to be innovative. We have the opportunity to be remembered to have contributed to the change most people are looking for, forward to. In times when MSMEs are closing down, facing financing gaps, including erosion of working capital, production losses, interrupted supply chains, to mention a few, it is important to stress that Malawi's MSMEs are predisposed to fragility due to the above challenges, and it is this that we should work extra hard to eliminate so that we, we promote a resilient sector. I'm in total agreement that we should not focus too much on the fears and challenges. The question which I hope to be answered by us remains, what should be done by stakeholders to ensure successful unlocking of the growth of MSMEs in Malawi? Firstly, we need to ensure that the policy and legislative framework is comprehensive and coherent to address the challenges faced by them. Such measures need to ensure that they are holistic in nature and should be promotional in character. Furthermore, they also address issues of leadership and professionalism. And I'm glad that the Honorable Minister is actually going to tackle that. Because these are key in supporting the growth of MSMEs. It must be stressed that folks, micro, small and medium enterprises, to achieve sustainable growth, vibrant leadership that is political as well as in, and when I mean political, I mean both internal and external, is offering them what they need and is also very paramount. In this aspect of political leadership, we need to deal with a major vice that is political influence in awarding of contracts. In simple terms, this is abuse of office. We are aware that politicians form an important part of national leadership and administration in the management of public finance. 
That is that this is the right time to do things differently. We know what has not worked in the past. The question is, are we willing to learn from it? This leads me to a very heated debate in this country, which requires naming if MSMEs are to strive. That is corruption. Malawi continues to be riddled with this problem, and you, as procurement and supply specialists, are not immune. And so, too, are the MSMEs. Therefore, it is critical for those that are in charge of procurement and supply in institutions appreciate the impact of corrupt practices on the economy and the people of this country. Malawians are looking to us all to be exemplary and ethical in our procurement and supply dealings. It is critical that we internalize the words of Angela Guria, who is the angel, sorry, not Angela, angel, who is the OECD Secretary General, who said integrity, transparency, and the fight against corruption have to be part of the culture. They have to be part of fundamental values. Thirdly, there is a need to implement laws that favor MSMEs. For instance, the 640 regulation. It can be noted that this regulation, for the time being, can be implemented in the absence of a review of other laws, which may be causing hindrances or need review for various reasons. Further, the availability of such a law means that where it is not complied with, it offers an MSME the ability to seek redress where there has been a violation of the same. This offers a great opportunity for changing the landscape in which MSMEs operate. Another important point to note, as I mentioned at the beginning, is that every crisis offers an opportunity to think differently. There are a number of businesses that have failed to survive disaster periods like COVID-19, but there are another, a, number of, a, number, a number of businesses that have strived. Therefore, the calls for strategies and for business continuity, transformation, and survival is critical. So we cannot just talk about the law and the financing, but also the capacity that goes to it, making them change for the better, so that they're able to face socioeconomic challenges in their journey to greatness. For businesses to survive, we need to continue sharing knowledge and learning from the past. Furthermore, it calls on Malawi to develop systems that allow for concessionary loans, debt moratorium programs, tax breaks, payment protection programs, and rental subsidies, among others. Fourthly, after highlighting what must be done to make a difference, it is still important to have a conversation on which is on critical building blocks for running efficient and resilient MSMEs in Malawi. Crucially, considering the capacity constraints of most of these enterprises, there is need for heavy investment in capacity or skill training programs that promote entrepreneurship potential or incubate such in the sector. Inclusiveness of the programs to reach vulnerable group, groups, especially women and youth, must be guaranteed to ensure job reach and sustainable recovery. Lastly, physical and financial instruments to provide for entrepreneurship opportunities with an emphasis on rural areas should be provided, including for migrants, we do have that in our countries, we also have refugees, so that we can ensure inclusion, and this is something that we must always and always emphasize. At this point, I believe I've spoken enough. Let my voice not be the only one you hear, you listen to this morning. It is my wish that I leave you to get, as I leave you to get started, on this impressive lineup of speakers and panelists who will lead a detailed discussion on several areas that I've mentioned. My responsibility for this morning was to basically set the ball rolling on an interesting and I'm very sure thought-provoking and idea development couple of days. It is my wish and I'm sure most of, my, of most Malawians who look to us as professionals that our meetings offer the country sustainable solutions. Finally, let me thank you all for your attention, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Final words to you all. Father Pierre de Chardin said, the future belongs to those who give the next generation reason for hope. Let us be that generation to do so, but also let us move beyond the hope and be the change. I now have the singular honor and pleasure to declare the 2020 Mix Annual General Conference officially open. Thank you for listening and we God bless you.
much CEO Madam uh, Mali to come and present a special gift to our guest of honor uh, accompanied by the board chair. Please move in front. Say who's wrong and who's right. 